Hi. Hello, I'm Aaron McKinnis, and this is... Uh, I'm the DPO. And we just finished uh, top eight and top 16 at Whitehead's Raleigh. Um, we built the deck together Thursday night. Um, car for car, same list, and I think performed fantastic for it. Um, obviously, it both very well. And then everyone else we had gave the list to all finished like extra or better. So I think the list itself uh, performed very well for everyone that entered with it. Quick shout out to me, uh, Nate Garcia, Tuesday night testing for the cards and support. Uh, Dylan and Aditya for the theory. Uh, Jesse for the last minute hotel room. Uh, Epic cards and games as always. And then uh, Castle Arena, Hashtag, Darian, Austin, Crew, uh, Walk, and Disciples for following along and keeping me support. And uh, shout out to Uh, shout out to Jose and Jesse for getting me the cards I needed in Top Cut. Uh, and shout out to Jordan for letting me both cards. Alright, so 42 cards, Catch Your Snake Ida. Uh, I was gonna skip through a lot of this because it's been pretty standard for a couple months now. Uh, it's normal engine stuff. I, we both wanted to max out on it. Um, most of my losses, and I think his were the same. All losses in Swiss were not being able to play the game. Uh, I think just the cash, like the Snake Eye engine is the best game. Uh, you want to maximize on it to the extent that is use, usable. And then cashier cards, three race off. This is the best starter because you get the free send um, for Diabell Star or Original or anything like that. Just having extra cards in rotation is nice. Uh, two Unicorn, two Fender, and then Birth. Um, I've swapped swap these numbers around. Um, I wanted to have the second Fender in the list somewhere, and I wanted to save the side deck space, so I ended up with it in the main. And then two Unicorn, I think it's just nice just to see the engine a little bit more. Uh, unicorn and Birth is like a nice end board piece as well. Uh, that's a, it was the goal of this deck, which is like give your end board the options to play against the deck that you needed. So against like uh, Branded, you would just end with Unicorn Birth on board, and you were able to like snipe an important extra card, like maybe Garden Chimera, or then Birth like on their Branded Fusion. And then against like another deck like the Mirror, you would just like use all these cards to make an Apple and then just play normally. Um, but I think the deck performs like as well for the goal. Um, the cashier package was very strong going second. Uh, personally, I think that going forward, I think people are playing Rome Awkward as uh, well. Um, yeah, Ray Soft so, goes down. Yeah, yeah. Ray Soft just goes down, you know, one goes on. Yeah, you just special unicorn first, and then when they draw, you just serve an extra deck card, and then from there, you just keep on going. Uh, three Imperm. This is the only hand trap we played. Uh, but there's a couple more on our side. But this is like the best, this is like the next best breaker on our list just because it hits every deck. And then it's a good six card. Um, it wasn't because it was a hand trap, we actually were like pretty indifferent towards them. Um, but this is like pretty much the best all around card at the moment. Uh, Caught by the Grave just hits hand traps, hits Garunix, just hits a lot of good cards that we expect to be in the format. Two Econ. Um, our list is 42, like I said, we wanted a little bit more non-engine on the list, and this is the worst one against uh, everything that wasn't the mirror. We weren't exactly sure how much we wanted to play, but we wanted this card on our list, so we decided on two in the main. And then a uh, three droplet, just the best all-around coverage card. Uh, three book of Eclipse. Dylan was really high on this card, and I played it in the past. Splinter Trail translate. I think it performed very well for us. Uh, it's obviously not like the most impactful going first, but going second, and especially into like some of the hand loop boards, really, and a lot of monsters. Uh, just being able to book all of them, turn off and read the principle is a really uh, strong effect. And then uh, three tactics. Just uh, I was I wasn't sure about this card because going first is like kind of questionable in a breaker format, but it ended up being like a lot of people were still in hand traps, and then going second this card is just like backbreaking and it gets purged every deck in the world. Oh, no, this, uh, for me. Yeah. yeah, I got rolled a couple times. Ta like mm -hmm. turning Joel into an egg too is just like one of the best things you can do against that deck. Or against that card. Uh, extra deck, Anima is a new Link Rebo. Every deck will be playing this. Uh, its effect came up like maybe once or twice. It was generally not impactful, but like you need like one. IP Midnight Early is, is like one of the new inboard pieces that you have the option of making. Uh, so you would just go IP early, and then you have Promethean Princess in the graveyard. Uh, that's how you would make this. And then it gives you like some more inboard options. And if you're scared of breakers, like it's something you can do. You can end on SP, you can end on App. Uh, sorry, not Apo. But like the other thing is you make a goddess with these cards. And whenever they try a tactics, you just link off your entire board into goddess. And then remove one of their monsters. And then from there, uh, tactics like does nothing to take. But that was really strong, uh, just making that card like not resolve. Because uh, like we, we, we realized how strong it was. So we need something to like play around it that wasn't in the game because there aren't any viable ones left. Uh, yeah, there are a couple cool plays, especially because you're playing like cards like Econ. Um, there's one game in my top 32 where um, like he was like setting up a board, like building the board. I went IP, I chained Econ, tributed my set Flamberg because I had Eclipse yeah. uh, to dodge a uh, Baylor. I tributed my set Flamberg, took his card, and then made Goddess with another, another card on his board. Yeah, it's a really versatile card. It like is good going off of IP, then also going second into boards. Uh, it turns off like Promethean Princess and some other stuff, so I think it's a really, really strong card right now. Uh, just good, strong Link 2s, SP, both Charmers, Phoenix. I think just all these are necessary, especially with all like the rogue decks and uh, sun running around.
and then Link 3s, I think both of these are necessary. Good extenders that also like facilitate killings, or like, yeah, OTK lines. And then Xcode, Apo, Creating Phoenix Alliances, just, oh again, OTK lines or Apo, just like one of the best network pieces that's generic and all to play around it. OTK anyways, you're always just like going for access. If they, if they have nib anyways, you just play through it anyways. Yeah. If you have Zolantis off here. And then Drago Sack, uh, whenever you open the like, Unicorn Blow Switch, you generally kind of go to this. Uh, you can, and then going second is all I made it a couple of times. Like it, it can pop cards. I think it's are really strong based on like having the cashier cards in the deck. Uh, I wouldn't cut this. It was actually one of my best cards in the deck. And then side deck. Uh, we had three nib and three ash. These were like our going first cards because whenever you, like if they see you're playing breakers going first, uh, game one. They're like may have like storm dusters, whatever. Um, so one of these cards like just be in the hand and like be useful. And then uh, they give you coverage like against the running deck. You let this in. Uh, whenever like if you break them game one and like they post side like anticipate you playing breakers. If they play into any hand trap in the game, it will be nib. Like they'll just disrespect it completely. Like trying to play on breakers. And then if this card ever resolves, like it is ends the game. Uh, so I think like it is the strongest going first card for that reason. Then also like going second, like it can't blow them out. Uh, and then three full return. This could have been Vicious or DD Crow because you're concerned with the branded deck. Neither of us played any, but um, I think having the coverage is like really important against that deck because it can just have to get you. Um, this one does lose to Mercurier, and then it has like some other utility against other decks. Uh, I think Crow may have been better in hindsight, but overall, like I think this card was a good call. Honestly, I'm just not sure. I never, I just had the card in enough. I just didn't draw it at yep. all. That card could have been like any other three cards for me. Yeah. But I think I think full return is actually correct. Yeah. Uh, third Cosmic Cyclone and Harpy's just more back row hate. Uh, this is the best one against like the Renish Sun deck. Obviously, like you prefer like Storms, but I think you see the coverage against uh, Hugin. And then uh, Antes Pella is one of and Silvera. This is because more decks are playing on Breakers now. And then Silvera is a really strong card. You can set it off of a Diet Bell Star. And it is a Hot Red Archfiend effect. So you just target the card on the field that gets it. Uh, plays around evenly match. Uh, it can get Droplet as well. So I think it has like a lot of nice utility. And it's obviously like not the easiest thing to set up. Especially when, when like you know they're on breakers, like trying to get to this is like I think really important. So yeah, shout out to the beginning. Uh thanks Johnny and Inspire for doing the deck profile and yeah. Peace.